Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, world's biggest anime fan, Mike James here, uh, with a with a different kind of video. I um I don't know if you guys noticed this, but a cyberpunk anime came out on Netflix recently, and it seems like everybody in the world is talking about it. But I you know I know you guys aren't interested in what everyone else has to say. You you want to hear me talk about it and my opinion. So I'm going to give you my opinion. On the show today and meanwhile i'm just going to be showing some um cyberpunk 2077 gameplay it's probably not going to be that interesting i uh, i beat the game once when it released and then have not touched it since so this is basically just going to be me messing around seeing what's new probably uh i think like the skill trees and stuff have changed now so i'm just going to be messing with that stuff it won't be all that interesting but it doesn't matter it's not the point point of the video is me talking about the show cyberpunk edge runners uh, an anime on Netflix, uh, produced by Studio Trigger of Kill la Kill, uh, fame. Uh, Studio Trigger owns, I just gotta start by saying that, their shows are always super pretty, uh, their animation is top-notch, and, um, I'm just gonna say, like, this show's worth watching just for the animation alone, because it's, uh, it's really good. Um, but before I get too far into it, uh, I'm gonna start off this video with just kind of general thoughts about the show i'm not gonna spoil anything you know other than maybe the basic premise so if you don't want to know anything about this show and would rather go in completely blind then watch it first it's only 10 episodes it's pretty short and then come back here and listen to my thoughts or you know just whatever if you're not too worried about it uh, i'm not gonna spoil anything yet i'll probably get into some more spoiler stuff towards the end but i'll i'll, I'll let you know i'll flash a thing on the screen to let you know when spoilers are happening so don't don't fret, my children. It'll be fine, I promise. Um, so yeah, anyway. Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Like I said, 10-episode anime. Basic premise revolving around the main character, David. A 17-year-old kid who's uh, pretty broke, pretty disenfranchised, impoverished, and um, being taken care of by his single mother. His mother, of course, doing a bunch of odd jobs to get money to put David through school. That school being... Arasaka Academy, you know, with the hopes that one day uh, David will be this big corpo man at the top of Arasaka Tower and you know, be super rich and successful. Um, but of course, things happen. Uh, things happens. Things ha I can't fucking talk today. Stuff happens and uh, life gets in the way. And um, David ends up attaching a military grade cybernetic to himself. Finds out that he has uh, a decent resistance to it because uh, for those who don't know, in the cyberpunk universe, if you uh, put too many cybernetics on your body, or what they call chrome, or you have uh, super advanced chrome, you run the risk of cyber psychosis, which is exactly what it sounds like. You lose your mind. You go crazy. It's a bad time. But um, David finds out he has a pretty good resistance to this. This, of course, puts him on Arasaka's uh, map. Arasaka being like the big bad company that's in control of everything, because, you know, cyberpunk is a dystopian, capitalistic nightmare world and uh yeah and then david ends up uh running with a group of edge runners basically mercenaries you know doing odd jobs for fixers and stuff like that in order to get money and uh make a name for themselves and become ultimate mercenaries and uh yeah i mean overall i really enjoyed the show like i said from an animation standpoint it's gorgeous the it, it's Got a ton of excellent action scenes. Uh, the the art direction, the design of the characters and the world. It's very, very true to the Cyberpunk 2077 game. Um, and uh, they actually like recreate a lot of the areas and even some of the characters very, uh, very true to what the game represents. And I thought it was really cool. So from a visual animation standpoint, um, it's incredible. The music is really good. I think a lot of it is music from the game. Probably some original music, too. Uh, very, very good stuff uh, from that standpoint. Um, but, I don't know. There's a lot of discourse online about this show, and I feel like a lot of people are treating it like it's, I don't know, the second coming of anime Christ or something. And uh, you, know, you hear people talking about, like, yeah, just watch this show. They're, like, easily top five anime of all time. And, like, you, you hear that, and you're like... Have you only seen five anime? Because <laughs> maybe if that's the case, then I could see that. But the, the issue with a show like Edge Runners is ultimately the fact that it's 
it, it's it's length, I think, really is what it comes down to. It's it's short and you know, on purpose. I think it's supposed to just be kind of a promotional supplemental anime for uh, for the game, which is fine. Um, but as a result, like I, I think pacing is its like number one issue because the, the premise I laid out earlier is basically the entire story of the show. It, it's nothing too complex or deep. It's got some twists and turns here and there, mostly revolving around the characters. But I think that's kind of the show's downfall because it's very with, with a sh- with a short show like this that doesn't have a very intricate plot. I feel like the main appeal is going to be the characters and their, you know, interpersonal relationships and stuff like that. And some of that stuff is done really well. Like, on a surface level, I really enjoy the majority of the characters in the show. Um, you know, David being a big one, Lucy, I really like. Uh, you know, Rebecca is a character that <laughs> a lot of people online seem to really love. I She didn't really matter all that much to me, but hey, you know, to, to each their own. Um, but... Because the show only has this 10 episode run, you have very little time to do what you need to do with these characters, right? Because you've got a lot of interesting characters and you want to be able to develop them, their wants, their desires, their needs, their past, all this stuff. And then you also want to develop their relationships with one another. And I don't know, I, I just didn't feel like there was like enough time to really do much of that. So as a result, you feel really rushed going through this anime almost like you get like whiplash and like there's there's a lot of big emotional things that happen in the show and on a surface level like it's it's uh interesting things that do happen and you know people talk about how like oh man the end of the show like it ruined me this that like oh it's like grave of the fireflies like it was great but i never want to watch it again because it you, you shook me to my core and it's like hey man if, if it had that impact on you then great i'm not trying to take that away from anyone but for me I feel like it just didn't have a chance to flesh out the characters enough for it to really resonate with me emotionally as much as it could have, you know? I can recognize the emotional moments of the show as big and impactful, but at the end of the day, like, I can't, I can't feel what I'm not feeling, you know? Like, if, if I felt like I knew these characters a little better, if I felt like I understood their relationships, why they liked one another, why they didn't like one another, just a little bit more, then, then maybe it would have hit with me a little better. Like, I, I think the show would have really benefited from just a few extra episodes. Even if it was a 12-episode anime as opposed to 10, I think that would have been nice. Because, uh, again, not really a spoiler, but pretty much halfway through the show, there's there's a bit of a, a time jump. It's I don't really even know how far in time it is. It might only be a few months. It's kind of hard to tell. It feels like a big time jump, but I think this entire episode, or this entire season, just takes place in the year 2076 so you know one year prior to the events of uh 2077 obviously but yeah i don't know it just it felt too rushed to me i i think they didn't spend enough time developing the characters in a way that would have made a lot of those emotional moments truly resonate with me personally now, granted, I'm also coming off of having, you know, finished uh, a show like Better Call Saul, which is a six-season, you know, hour-long drama that is very character-driven, very, very much slow burn, but it makes it so that all the um, big emotional moments really, really hit, you know, because you know these characters, you know everything they've gone through, you've seen it all, and it 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 makes the payoffs that much more impactful, and I think that's kind of my issue with this show, is it, it feels like nonstop payoffs to build build ups that never really happened if that makes sense um but i you know overall thoughts i I still really enjoy it i think it's a really good show it's very fun to watch uh you know i i would probably write it at somewhere around like in eight to ten eight 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 out of ten eight point five out of ten like it's it's very good i don't want to sound too down on it i just think it could have been better if it had a bit more time to flesh out the characters a little more um but yeah i i I guess general thoughts out of the way now i can just kind of talk a little bit more about spoilery stuff so i'm gonna put the warning up on the screen here just to say like hey if if you don't want to know anything about the show go watch it and then come back we can talk about it um but i'll try to explain some of my 
issues with it in in, in greater detail. So it, pacing, like I said, was the number one thing. Uh, I also didn't mention tone. Tone is kind of all over the place in the show. So this is going to be a personal taste thing. And this is just kind of, it's the same issue I have with the cyberpunk game as I do with the show is it's a very like, whoa, look how ultra edgy everything is like, Ooh, super dark and dystopian. You, you, you. And it's like, that's, that's great. That's fine. It, I, makes me roll my eyes sometimes, but, uh, it, it also makes it tough for me to feel the proper, uh, emotions that I think a show wants me to feel at certain points. And I think this is best represented with the very first episode of this show. And, you know, looking back on it, the first episode might actually be my least favorite episode of this show. And let me tell you why. So what happens in the first episode is we're introduced to, uh, David, um, and his mom, and, uh, you know, we, we find out the whole story about him going to Arasaka Academy and her trying to pay for him and all that. And uh, the, the big thing that happens in the first episode is that his mom ends up dying. And that is kind of like the... How do I want to say it? The catalyst for everything else that happens in the show. Like, it's a big moment, and it's supposed to be a really big moment. And I do not think it's handled particularly well. So why don't I think it was handled well? Well, the scene basically works like this. Uh, David and his mom are driving down the highway, essentially, and his mom's talking to him about how, like, oh, I work so hard for you to go to school, you know, because uh, David in our soccer academy, he was supposed to get, like, uh, some software update for uh, his Chrome in order to uh, continue classes or whatever, and he ended up getting some, like, bootleg from his Ripper doc, and it kind of screwed everything up. Uh, and she was kind of reprimanding him about that saying like, look how hard I work to get you through school so that you can become successful. One day you can be at the top of our soccer tower. Like that's my dream for you. Uh, and during the scene at some point, you know, a, a gain of, I don't know, fucking cyber mercs or whatever, roll up next to them on the highway and start opening fire on the car across from them because that's their target. And the way this plays out, it almost feels like a comedy, right? Like, it's almost like a scene to be like, look how crazy and wacky the cyberpunk universe is. You're just driving down the highway and you get shot at. Whoa. Uh, and, you know, the animation, because it's so over the top, maybe adds to that, too. Like, it doesn't feel like a dramatic, serious scene. It feels like a goofy, like, oh, look at all the shooting happening. Um, But because of that, they end up getting into a car accident, you know, David's in the car flipped and he sees his mom outside of the car just laying down and he's like, mom, mom, are you okay? Trauma team comes, they see her and realize they're like, oh, she's not one of our clients. She's not part of our you know, the premium plan or whatever. So they just kind of leave her <laughs> and you know, whatever. So, uh, David and his mom end up getting medical care based on whatever plan they have, which is not a very good plan. But, uh, the doctor basically tells David like, oh yeah, your mom's stable. She'll be all right. It's all good. And then like cut to the next day. And the doctor's like, just kidding, she's not stable anymore. In fact, she's going to die. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and again, like all this stuff, the way it's being presented is almost comedic. In fact, I, I would argue it is comedic. And uh, it also, here's another thing. I'm sorry, small sidetrack. But this is something that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And maybe if someone in the comments can explain it or has more knowledge of the cyberpunk universe, that'll make this make more sense for me than great. But like the whole premise here is, I guess, the way... Uh, the the medical field works in the cyberpunk universe is you just pay for specific plans and you only get the care that your plan covers. So it, it's it's like it's kind of like insurance plans, but the thing is that that's not really how real world works, or at least not here in America. Like if you get into a car accident and you go to the hospital. They're going to give you whatever care they're able to give you. It doesn't really matter what your insurance plan is. Your insurance plan just basically covers whatever your insurance will pay for, right? And insurance is really risk, uh, really complicated. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not by any means a, uh, a, a master of insurance. So I'm not going to pretend like I know all the ins and outs of that. But, like, basically, you're, you're not going to get a victim from a car accident and just be like, oh, well, he doesn't have insurance, so we're just going to let him die, right? Like, that's not how it works. You get the care you need. And then if insurance covers it, great. If not, then you get saddled with the debt. And now in a world like cyberpunk, where it's a dystopian, uh, capitalistic nightmare where money is all that matters, wh why wouldn't that be how that works? Like, why, why wouldn't they want to settle people with more debt? Especially in a situation like, you know, I know they have information 
on um, David's mother and her situation. Like, she's a single mom with a 17-year-old child. Uh, if she dies, you're no longer getting that money from her, right? And, like, what would you expect her 17-year-old to be able to pay off whatever debt they have? Like, he, he's probably going to get himself killed anyway. So it's... You, you think you would want your... Uh, um, you think you would want your, your customers or your patients to live so that they can continue paying you money, right? And in a situation where, like, oh, you get a patient who needs medical care, you think you would give them whatever med medical care you were able to provide and then just settle them with more debt so you could then make more money, right? Like, isn't wouldn't that be how they want things to work in this world if all they care about is money? I don't quite get why it would be like, well... We, we can give her better care, but that's not the plan, so we're just going to let her die. Like, that... I don't know. Th th that whole situation just seems kind of goofy to me. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, and the way everything is presented, it almost feels comedic. So, you have this big emotional moment where David loses his mom, and I feel like right off the bat, I just didn't feel any emotional resonance there. I didn't feel sad. I felt like this whole thing was played as a joke, and it's supposed to show how, you know, dumb and messed up this world is. But, like, that's the emotional catalyst for everything else that happens in the show. It's the reason David ends up uh, attaching that military-grade cybernetic that his mom took and was going to sell off. It's it's the reason he joined up with the Edge Runners. It, it's it, it, towards the end of the show. Like, it, it's... He ends up killing this other lady who is a mother in a similar situation that his mom was in. And, you know, he ends up feeling that guilt and connection from, like, his own mom. And, I don't know, it just kind of rings more hollow when that whole situation was played for goofs, in my opinion. Like, that's just kind of how it felt. I don't feel like they really nailed that moment too well. So, and tonally, there's there's a lot of that stuff in the show where, you know, usually it's connected to a character death where some of the character deaths are handled really, really well and others are like, am I supposed to feel bad about that? There's another character... Uh, Pillar, Pilar, I can't remember. It's Rebecca's brother, right? Like, he dies because he fucks with some cyber psycho who was peeing in a barrel in an, like, abandoned train yard. <laughs> Number one, why even care? This whole, you, you you see the show where David's just walking around Night City and you see people doing drugs, you see people hooked up to uh, brain dances where they're having sex and they get the underwear that's jerking them off and, like, this character gets mad because he sees essentially a hobo peeing in a barrel like just fucking move along dude who really cares um, but but you know he, he messes with this dude and then ends up getting his head blown off and then Rebecca goes nuts and it's this whole scene and it's like we didn't even get enough time with that character to care that much the time we did get with the character he was just kind of a dick that I personally didn't care about and then you know he dies and it's like okay <laughs> And I felt that way about a lot of the quote unquote like emotional moments in the show. It just it I felt like it didn't land nearly as well, either because of pacing issues where we didn't get enough time to develop the characters or because of weird tonal shifts that just didn't really work for me. Um, and, and you know, it's just the pacing in general because after I think it's episode seven or like six or seven, like I mentioned before, there's a time jump where, you know, David, having gone from this, like, street kid who was a total rookie, is now, like, the new leader of the Edge Runners, and he's this total badass, and he's all totally chromed up now, and, uh, I, I, I him and Lucy are in, in love, which, you know, that, that whole development happens pretty quick, too, because initially she fucking, uh, screws him over in the beginning and uses him. And, like, he's hurt by that, but then he gets over it, and then they have, like, one scene, they make out, I guess they have sex, and then they're in love now. And, you know, Lucy, that character, makes a lot of decisions you find out later on that she did specifically for David that actually fucked over some of the other characters. But, but there just wasn't enough time, and you don't understand what her motivation was other than, well, she loves David, but I, I, I feel like I don't really get why. And maybe that's just me. It just, it didn't connect with me all that much and I don't know like I said that that's my overall issue with the show is it, it's it's rushed the the pacing is breakneck I feel like I got whiplash and the the tone can kind of be all over the place where like it, it's it's hard to tell what they're going for in some scenes like is this supposed to be goofy badass over the top action is it supposed to be really dramatic is it both 
I don't know. It, it, clearly, it, it landed for some people better than it landed for me. And that's fine. If it really landed for you, that's great. I'm happy for you. These are just my personal issues with the show. And it's part of the reason why, despite the fact that I think it is a really, really good show, I don't think it's as quite as excellent as a lot of the discourse online seems to paint it as. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I Overall, worth a watch, for sure. It's, it's, if nothing else, very entertaining, beautiful to look at, and there's definitely some character moments in there that I really appreciated. Um, and especially if you're interested in the cyberpunk world, I'd say watch it for sure. Um, I don't know, like I said, maybe an 8 out of 10. It's very, very good, just not quite as amazing as I think a lot of people online are painting it as, but... To each their own. That's just my opinion. How about you guys? Have you seen it? What do you think about it? Did you really like it? Did you really not like it? I would like to hear what you guys have to say. And, and if there's anything that I've talked about, any criticisms you have with things that I brought up that you feel aren't accurate or whatever, by all means, let me know. I'd love to hear it. But, uh, yeah. I think, uh, this is going on long enough. So, uh, with that, I'm gonna go, I don't know, do something else. <laughs> Bye!